It's an amazing statistic. Heart attacks are the leading killer in this country for both men and women. Every second is crucial for survival. Early warning devices are available now that can give you more time. With me today is my partner, Dr. Kelly Tucker. He's the Director of Electrophysiology and Cardiac Pacing at the Orange County Heart Institute. Kelly, thanks so much for coming today. Uh, thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show. Kelly, for two decades you have brought us all uh, cutting edge technology. First was the implantable defibrillators, and then you talk, brought us the Watchman device, the little device that goes in the heart that prevents clots. Uh, several years ago, you brought us the implantable artificial heart, and now you have another device for early detection of heart, heart attacks. Is that right? And why don't you tell us what a heart attack is and how this thing fits in with the regimen of treating heart attacks? Sure. Larry, this is the Angel Alert System, and I'm just as excited about this system as I have been about all the great technology you just mentioned. It's a device that helps warn a patient that they're having a heart attack. A heart attack, as you know, is a situation in which there's abrupt uh, closure of the artery and problems with blood flow to the heart that cause damage to the heart. Um, and then this device will actually warn the patient that they're about to have a heart attack. As you know, about a million heart attacks will occur in this country this year. Unfortunately, a large percentage of those, about 400,000, will result in, in death of the patient. And the reason the patients die largely is because they fail to recognize the early warning signs of a heart attack, so they stay at home instead of coming to the hospital to seek emergency therapy. What are, what are the, the warning signs of a heart attack? Well, I think many people out there, patients believe that they're going to have a very dramatic event with crushing chest pain and they're going to collapse to the floor. And unfortunately, in, nothing could be farther from, from the truth. In reality, the patients will have very subtle symptoms, sometimes just mild shortness of breath, sometimes an upset stomach, which they think is just heartburn. Sometimes they have virtually no symptoms at all when they're actually having a major heart attack. And so, what the world needs and what this device provides is a gadget that can, can detect a heart attack before it happens, shortly before it happens, warn the patient, and so the patient can then seek emergency medical care. Okay, so right now, when somebody thinks they're having a heart attack, we tell them to call 911, and they go to the emergency room, and then what happens? Well, they get to the emergency room, the emergency physicians get an EKG, they can promptly tell that the patient's having an a heart attack on that basis, and then they rush them off to surgery or the heart catheterization lab where blood flow is restored to the heart and everything then works perfectly normal after that. So this thing is quite small, so how does this work? Where do you put it in your body and yeah. how, how, does, how does that work? This gadget's a great gadget. It's a little pulse generator which has the brains or silicon circuitry, the power source or battery, and it's attached to this insulated wire. They actually come apart and you can screw this piece in, and then this wire, the pulse generator goes under the skin here in the chest, and then the wire is threaded right into the heart where it can detect every heartbeat, and it can tell if you're having a problem with blood flow to your heart or heart attack. So it's kind of like a um, EKG that they're carrying around with them all the time, electrocardiogram. It's an implantable EKG monitor, exactly. Now that's quite small. I mean, that's only, what, like two silver dollars in size, right? It's about the size of two silver dollars. And it's uh, implanted through a little three-inch incision. You know, it's not it's open heart small, surgery. Really small. Yeah. So you don't have to crack the chest like, and have a big scar, just a little tiny pocket. Exactly. So, and it takes about how long to do that, would you say? The procedure, it's a minor procedure. Technically, it's an outpatient procedure. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Patients uh, can expect to be up and around the same day and usually go home the following day. We do watch them overnight in the hospital. Uh, but they cannot basically return to their usual activities within a day or two. So they're w out of the hospital in 24 hours and that's it, right? Absolutely. And that battery and the brains last a year, two years, how long about? The pulse generator, which contains the battery, uh, will last about five years, okay? And at the end of five years, it would have to be replaced through another safe, simple surgery. So we know all the risk factors for heart disease, you know, high blood pressure, smoking, diabetes. Just because you have those risk factors doesn't mean this is what you're going to get. Who, who needs to have this device? Well, currently, the device is investigational. In order to qualify for the study, you have to be at high risk to have a heart attack in the future. And that's currently being defined as a patient who's already required a stent 
or a bypass surgery for a blockage. So it's a patient who already has a defined blockage in the arteries. So if you've had a heart attack in the first year, your chance of having another one is about 10% and then the second year is about 3% per year. So it just can't be somebody with risk factors. It has to be somebody who's already had a cardiac event of some sort, bypass stents or something like that. Exactly, yeah, and a, and a large percentage of those patients will have another event in the first year as you just pointed out. The battery, if it wears out, that's like pacemakers wear out, this can easily be taken out and put a new one in, I imagine? Yeah, it's a very simple procedure. Probably that procedure takes less than half an hour. There is a, a big treatment and a big trend in this country to, to prevent heart disease before it occurs. This is people who have heart disease and you really want to prevent a catastrophic event. So this thing goes off. How does a patient know that, he's, that this thing is, that he's having a heart attack with this device? In? Right, the device will alarm the patient by vibrating and it has two modes. There is a soft alert, if you will, in which it's just a soft vibration and then the patient is instructed to call their physician in that case. And then there's a major alarm in which it vibrates more vigorously. And that means call 911, you're about to have a heart attack. Call them right away. Call them immediately, immediately. call 911. And what happens if you're sleeping? Is that gonna wake you up or? Yeah, it's a pretty vigorous vibration. And we actually test it in the patients prior to you know the implantation, make sure that they can uh, feel it and, and that they understand what the vibration's all about. So if you have a pacemaker, can you put that into or, or no? Well, I think in the future, the technology in these devices is going to be downloaded into pacemakers. However, in the current study, if you have a pacemaker, you'd be excluded. So do you estimate, is there some statistical estimation about how many lives you think this could save if there's... Well, 400,000 people will die from heart attacks this year. If all of those patients were identified up front and got this device, we think the majority of them could have their lives saved the vast majority. So this could be a game changer. I mean, a real game changer. This is huge. I think this is some of the most exciting technology I've ever been involved in. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of exciting technology, before we uh, have to end, you brought the um, this implantable artificial heart here about uh, two or three years ago. Can you give us an update on this now? Yeah, that's the left ventricular assist device, and we talked about it a few years ago. At that time, it was investigational, just like the Guardian device is today. However, since that time, the FDA has approved the device. Now, over 10,000 Americans have received that device, including uh, Vice President Dick Cheney. And um, also our patient, Nancy Miller, who was profiled on the show, she's still alive, she's doing well. And in fact, uh, she met a guy through the LVAD program who also received an LVAD, and now the two of them are dating. That's an amazing story. That's, <laughs> that's, really that's love through story. technology, I guess. Yeah, it's really a great story. Thanks for bringing this great technology. It's very interesting. It's going to be a game changer. It was very, very interesting.